Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Derry Keats, and I use LibreOffice a lot in my work, so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time today uh, just going through with you some of the ways in which you can use LibreOffice creatively. And I'm going to focus on LibreOffice Draw, which is the uh, vector graphics uh, package that's part of the LibreOffice suite. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating or adapting a complex diagram using LibreOffice Draw. And of course, we're doing this on Linux. Everything I do is on Linux, as you probably are aware by now. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at LibreOffice Draw. Now, LibreOffice is a office package that uh, comes with five applications. There's the, the word processing application. Um, there's a spreadsheet. There's a presentation application that kind of uh, enables you to do more or less what you can do with PowerPoint. And then there's a draw application and a database application. So coming back to the fourth one, the one with the orange yellow icon, we are going to use LibreOffice Draw to take a diagram um, that I want to recreate. Now, I haven't done this yet. So this is uh, me taking something that I want to do, doing it in front of you so that you can also learn how to do it. So this is quite a complicated diagram. And I need a simple, simple version of it that I can use in a presentation. Obviously, this is not suitable for presentation because there's uh, too many words in it. So I'm going to take this diagram. I'm going to replicate it uh, in a more simplified way so that I can use it in a presentation. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So now the reason I'm, I'm making this um, video is I find, well, there's two reasons, I guess. I find that one of the best ways for me to learn something is to teach it to somebody else. So in the process of making this video, I had to teach myself how to do that. But I wanted to do it because I wanted to make the slide uh, to use in my uh, course materials. Um, but the other meta reason for doing it is that there is a lot of information out there on LibreOffice. And you can go on YouTube and you can Google and and you will find tons and tons and tons of information about LibreOffice. But there's relatively little about LibreOffice Draw and almost nothing about how to use LibreOffice Draw to make the kind of complex shapes that we often find used in diagrams. Things like this circle that's around me here and, uh, and, and shapes of varying kinds that you find in diagrams that are used to illustrate key concepts. And it's relatively easy to make them in LibreOffice. You don't need fancy software. You don't need expensive um, software like Adobe uh, tools and so on. Most of the things you can do quite nicely, and quite simply, and easily in LibreOffice Draw. So that's why this is, I think, and I hope, um, a useful exercise for me to do and hopefully for you to learn from. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is create a LibreOffice Draw file. Now, I do this because I have templates set up. And I can just go uh, New Document, uh, LibreOffice Draw. And I want a LibreOffice Draw widescreen uh, so that it matches the size and shape of a normal presentation. So I just create that. And then I have my image which is called, uh, it's, um, it's about a cybersecurity concept called uh, Defense in Depth. So we're going to create a, a presentation, or sorry, a draw file called Defense in Depth. So I just go back to my uh, other tab, and I just rename this Defense in Depth. If you don't have templates set up, you can always just create a new file in, in Draw and save it. Now, when I double click this file, it's going to uh, open LibreOffice Draw. And there isn't anything in it at the moment. Um, so um, I think it uh, goes without saying that we need to get stuff in there in order to make it work, in order for it to be uh, useful. And in order to uh, be able to copy this image or 
create a derivation of it. I need to move that image into there. So I just simply drag it in there as you normally would. And I, um, I may want to make it slightly larger on the screen here. Probably no more than that because I have another layer that I want to add later on um, to cover cloud environments as well. So this is probably good enough for us now. So you can see down at the bottom tab here, let me just go to full screen so you can see better. Down on the bottom tab here, you have layout, controls, and dim dimension lines. Um, layout is typically the back most layer. So I'm going to modify that layer and I'm going to lock it. So now it's locked. So now no matter what I do here, I can't modify that layer. Now, what I'm going to also do is right click here and say insert layer. And I'm just going to call this layer circles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create these uh, circles here. And uh, that will be the first step in creating this uh, diagram. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go to the shape uh, tool here and we pick a circle. And we enlarge the circle until it more or less matches. Oops. Um, sorry, I made it not quite a circle. So here's one thing that we're going to have to do. I'm going to just have to unlock this uh, layer for a second. And I'm going to have to move it up because there isn't enough space off the, off the bottom here for me to make the circle the size I need it to be. So I'm just going to move this up so that I can get the circle the right size. Okay, so now we're in the circle again. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's a circle shape or not, because we can always uh, resize it and reshape it after. At the moment, it's more like a bit of an egg than a circle. So here we can see that we've more or less lined it up now um, with the object that we're trying to um, replicate the outermost uh, uh, shape of. Now we can make it transparent so we can better see what we're doing here. Um, and you can see that, it, that the original source is actually not quite a circle either. Um, so we will just resize it accordingly so we get it more or less right. It doesn't have to be perfect because um, it's the principle that we want to, to uh, replicate not necessarily the actual shape. Okay, so now we've got the circle, the right shape. And it's overlaying this uh, image that we want to draw. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bottom half of the circle. So to do that, we create another shape, a rectangle, that just needs to be larger than the, than the circle. And we draw it over the top of the circle. Now what we do is we select the circle, that has to be done first, and then we select the shape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go right click, we're going to choose shapes, and we're going to subtract. Okay, so now you can see we have a half circle that's exactly the same shape as our underlying, um, our underlying, uh, um, uh, you know, the base of the underlying image. So now what we can do, we can probably move this one back down a bit and uh, I'm not going to move it all the way to the bottom yet because I have some more circles to draw and I need space underneath in order to be able to draw those circles. So this is the first circle. We're just going to line it up. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to just create a new page and Onto that new page, I'm just going to use it as a, as, a, as a temporary placeholder for shapes that I, I create because we're going to create some shapes and then we're going to use them to subtract from the underlying one and, uh, and then we're going to reuse them again. So we need to make copies of them and not have them be in the way. So this is what we're going to use that for. So let's just go back up to our uh, diagram here. And now... Let's take this uh, half circle shape 
and let's just make a copy of it over here in case we need it in case we mess it up and then we need it again always a good idea to make copies of your shapes when you're doing this so you don't have to recreate them every time so now what we need to do is we need to make this outer uh, purple circle and then after that we're going to make a, make the blue circle and then the orange one and, and and the red one and then the what is that light green um, cyan one and and so on so let's let's uh, do that first so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take another create another circle that is uh, the shape of the next next one so we're just going to redraw this we're going to just drag the circle until it takes on the shape of the one underneath getting there but we're not quite there yet and i didn't um i didn't hold down the shift key to make the circle uh, keep its shape so i'm paying the price now by having to do it a little slightly more difficult way not quite there yet is it How does that look? The color of the circles don't matter at this stage. Um, yeah, maybe it looks okay. Let's just make it transparent so we can see what we're doing here. And maybe let's just make the line, the outer line disappear for a minute. I, I think I'm gonna make the outer line white so it's easier to see where the perimeter of the circle is. I think we just need to make it a little more circle shaped. and make it slightly bigger. Okay, that looks all right. So now what we can do, we do exactly the same as we did with the other one. We make a, a rectangle, put it on top, and we pick where we want to chop. We select the, uh, the one underneath first, and then the next layer. And then we go, sorry, let me make this, let me just bring this arrange, bring to front, make sure that it's at the front. And then let's, shapes, subtract. Okay, so now we have another um, semicircle, build semicircle. Okay. I seem to have moved the outer one a little bit. Okay, so let's just make this one that uh, purple, purplish color. So we just pick some, um, pick a standard palette. If we can find something that's close enough to that. So that's purplish. And we don't need it to be transparent right now. Um, and then the next one, uh, now we need it to be transparent because <laughs> um, we need to see what's underneath. The next one is a kind of bluish color. So this one then becomes a kind of bluish color. And we don't need it transparent. So as you can see, you can you can start to build up the layers that way. We don't have them exactly um we don't have them exactly lined up. There we go. That's better. Now the next one you can and do the same thing with um, there might be another way to do it and that is we can copy this one okay so we've copied it uh, we just changed the color a little bit we make it orange and now the thing is as you can see that this circle has got edit points so if we select the corner and drag it it's not just going to simply resize it because the edit points um will be um you know they will drag the the shape of the circle so i'll show you you see so we don't want to do that um what we want to do is i'm going to just take a shape and just put it here on top of this circle and then i'm going to group them now you see the 
edit points have gone away unless I go inside the group and then you can see the edit points again. So let's come out of the group and then we can just resize this. Um, to bring them to be more or less the same. Okay, that will do. Um, let's just take a look at our, our diagram that we're using here. So there's a purple one, a blue one, an orange one, a red one, and another one inside that. So we're going to just copy this shape again. And we can also resize this. Holding down the shift key to make sure the shape stays the same. And um, a slightly bit bigger. Okay, so that kind of more or less right. And this one is supposed to be red, right? Let's just take that shape away. Now you can see we've got um, this one dark red. We'll remove the, the white lines later, don't worry. Or we can leave them if we want. Might actually be better with the white lines there. And then we have one more. I think. we we'll just make it smaller again. And what color is it? It's sort of a cyan -y color. And let's check our image. The red one and the cyan one. Okay, so the cyan one is the last layer. Make it slightly bigger. Line it up better. Now what we could do here, if we wanted to, let me just line up the, this one a little bit better. What we could do here if we wanted to is we could copy each of these circles and, and, and just use the inner one to remove the, um, the rest of the circle from the outermost one so that we just end up with an arc instead of a circle. So let me show you what I mean. So here's that one. But let's take the inner one. Oops, let's just copy this slide first. Uh, duplicate page so we don't lose our, in, our outermost circle in case we want to do something with it later. Um, so we take that one and select it, and we select the outermost one, and then we just go shapes subtract. So you're left with an arc instead of a circle. We could do that. I don't think this diagram requires that. So... Let's just do it this way. Now, the next thing is, if we look at the diagram again, you will see that there's this mission critical assets blob in the middle here. So that's another circle. Um, and um, we're going to just basically do the same thing again. We're going to, um, we're going to select a circle and we're going to just use that, create that blob. And we can make it slightly bigger. Oh, it's the control key you have to sh uh, hold down. No wonder I wasn't getting it right. Sometimes they change these things without telling you they're going to, which can be a bit annoying. So that's probably okay for the blob in the middle. Let's just check our um, diagram again and see. Yeah, should be okay. Okay, so that's going to be our blob. And remember what we're going to do now is we're going to just simply take another rectangle and draw over it. Um, careful we don't remove too much. 
And then we select the inner one, select the outer one, and shapes, subtract. So now we have our nested circles, or nested arcs, depending on what you want to call them. I'm going to just give this one a white line as well. I actually like the white line. Um, so now that we've drawn all of these, we can just move them down to the bottom, uh, almost to the bottom. Now, we, I actually like to have a little bit of a space um, before the bottom. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a line, just a white a line, draw it there, and make it a white line, and make it about six point, points, and just draw it, drag it close to the bottom there. So, yeah, I think that will do. So that's our shapes for the moment. Okay, so now we need to do something with this one. So I'm going to just move this range, bring to front so I can see it, um, and put it back um, underneath. So the next thing we have to do now is create these kind of triangular uh, cut circle, circle, I want to call that a slice of a pie. These slices of a pie that are going to sit here on top of our underlying uh, arcs. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I took a little break and I made some modifications to the, uh, to the image we made. So you can see the, the top one in here is the one that we just worked on. And I just uh, recreated it um, a little more carefully than what I was able to do in in showing you just sometimes when you're trying to do things fast in order to illustrate the point um, it doesn't always come out exactly the way you want so so here is our original and here is what we just created and here's uh, the, the version that I just made where I've also left enough room up here at the top um, to be able to add another layer later on so <clears throat> now, I just want to illustrate one, one point. So sometimes when you're making these uh, diagrams, uh, you don't always end up with them exactly nicely organized. And uh, sometimes, you know, <laughs> things don't quite exactly look right. So the quickest way to fix that is to just select all of them and then ch choose Align. And then for the horizontal um, alignment, we choose Centered. And then for the vertical alignment, we choose align bottom. And obviously then we move them back onto the, onto the screen. Okay, so that's the basic uh, elements of uh, this diagram. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create these uh, pie slices here. So to do that, I'm going to take this background uh, one, which is the one that's the full size. In other words, it's the same uh, uh, width or diameter as the as the pie that we're going to create a slice of. So we're just going to take this one, copy it, and paste it. Control C, Control V, and then I'm just going to change its color. So it's a bit of a green color. So let's make it green. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this um, diamond here that we use, remember, to um, avoid uh, the, uh, the, the situation where we've got um, markers that, that, that will change the shape of the object when we drag them. So I'm just going to uh, remove this for the time being. Now what I'm going to do, we, we need a way to cut this pie. So first, we're going to just cut it in half. I'm just going to make it a little bit transparent so we can see what's underneath. Okay, so, <clears throat> so now we're going to just cut it in half. So we just select it so we know where the middle is. And then we drag out one of these marker lines here. 
until we mark the middle. It's right there in the middle of that. Let's just zoom in a little bit here so we can see. I haven't quite got it right. Right in the middle of that um, selection point there. Okay. Okay, so let's just make this big enough that we can actually see better what we're doing. So I'm, I'm just holding down control and, and using the, the scroll wheel of the mouse. So now I'm going to just cut this in half, or I'm going to remove half of it. So we select the underlying item first, then the one we want to use is the, is the cookie cutter, and then we go shapes, subtract. Okay, so now we've got a quarter pie, but that's not the shape that the pie needs to be, right? So we're just going to bring this down here, and... We're going to create a shape, and then we're going to rotate that shape by selecting Rotate up here. Those, this um, uh, icon here is Rotate, and you can see that the handles change to red and that you can rotate them. And then we're going to bring this over, and we're going to rotate it until it's at the right angle for our pie wedge. It's almost right, but not quite. So let's just move it slightly, not much. Okay, so that's more or less correct. But you can see that when we, um, when we uh, do our cut here, we're gonna miss this bit up here. So we're just gonna drag this up until it's outside of the area where we want to remove everything. Oops. Now we're gonna just go Control X to cut it. Go to the next one. And paste it there. Oops, sorry. And then uh, let's do this the right way. Select the bottom one. Select the one we want to use as the cutter. And then go shapes, subtract. So now we have our pie slice, more or less as it is here slightly different color. Now we can do the same thing again, make the circle, do the uh, cutting it in half and then do the pie slicing. But there's an easier way. We can simply go control C, control V to copy that. And then we can go flip horizontally. And then we just move it over to the other side. And line it up. Uh, when you're lining things up, you can press the Alt key, and it just moves things slightly less when you press the arrow key. So Shift moves it a lot. Normal moves it that much. Alt moves it like that. Okay, so now we have more or less what we've got here, except for the slightly two different colors of green. So let's make this one a different color of green. Now let's make them both not transparent. Not transparent. And let's give them the white one point, one point outline. And continuous white one point. point. And this one's a bit, still a bit dar uh, dark. Um, or a different, yeah, maybe like that. It's not the same colors, but doesn't matter. They don't have to be the same colors. Okay, so now, but look at this. This a little semicircle here with the mission crit critical assets in it is on top. So what do we do? We select this one. There are two ways we could do it. We could select this one, copy it, paste it in, and use it to subtract from the other two. Or we could just simply select it, arrange it, and bring it to front. So now we have our basic pattern, similar to the pattern in the original uh, diagram. So next, we've got to do, next what we've got to do is we've got to create some circular text here. Um, or at least curve text to match these uh, words here. So perimeter security, network security, endpoint security, application security, data security are all slightly curved to match the curve of the circle. 
So that's what we've got to do next. Okay, so I'm going to go off and practice first, and then I'll be back, but you won't miss me. Okay, so to get the, the curved text to work in LibreOffice Draw, there is a curious thing that has to be done. Um, there is a feature called Fund Work, which is not to be mistaken for the rather strange tool that lets you create weird 1990s style curved text. Uh, it's a different one. And you have to add it to a toolbar. So I'm going to pick this toolbar on the left here. Uh, right click anywhere on the toolbar and choose Customize Toolbar. And then up pops this little dialog and we need to look for font work which I suppose will be under F. F. Font work, this one. So this we need to now add to this toolbar. So we are going to add it by moving it over here. And there it is, you can see at the bottom of the of the toolbar. We can uh, move it up to other areas if we want, but I'm happy leaving it there. So I'm just going to leave it at the bottom and uh, select OK. So now this tool, uh, Fontwork Text, is available. And that's what we're going to use to create the, the, the curved text. OK, so to create this curved text like we have here, um, there basically are three methods that you can use. So the first method is um, based on the fact that we've already split these uh, shapes, um, these circles into shapes. And so they are made up of curves. They're no longer circle shapes. So as a consequence of that, we can make uh, the curvature of the text follow the, the curvature of the circle shape. So that's one way to do it. And that's probably the preferable way, given that we've already created these shapes. Just one caveat. Um, the shapes can't be in a group. So if uh, the shape has got uh, something copied with it, um, like we made in in that first, um, you know, in the in the first set of circles that we were creating, we used a little diamond shape to anchor the uh, the circle, uh, the, the the chopped circle, so that we could resize it and position it better. If you've got that there, then you you can't type the text unless you go into the group and specifically select the circle. So just make sure that that's, uh, that's not an issue because I've been trying to figure this out for the last few minutes so I could continue this video and uh, it stumped me until I realized it was part of a group. Okay, so if we, if we, if we look down here, you see that I've uh, taken one of those uh, half circles and I've already curved some text along along the margin just inside the, the circle. And um, what I've got down here is another circular shape that I've copied from the first set that we made and uh, removed the little diamond that we had stuck inside of it that caused me all sorts of consternation until I figured it out. Um, so now here is the shape and you can see that it is uh, it's a curve, it's not, um, it's not a, um, uh, so here we go, we can make it into a MAGA hat, how about that? Um, but that's not what we want to do, we want to make text go along the curve, so let me control Z to f uh, turn that back, but that was just to show you that this is a curve, it's not no longer a, a part of a circle shape. So if I go here now and I type some text in here, um, I don't know, network security. Okay, so that's now uh, text inside the shape. And in our, in our uh, diagram at the top there, the text is white, so we may as well make it white. Okay, so now how do we make it um, curve, simple? So we, we take this uh, um, font work tool here by clicking the little uh, font work T 
um, when we go up here, you can see that this left button, the font work is off. Uh, the next one is uh, rotate or curve the text. Um, now the text has gone outside here, so you can't see it. Uh, let me just make it a different color so you can actually see where it went. Um, there you go. Um, now, but that's not where we want it, right? So you can choose where you want the text aligned. So do you want it to align left or right? Uh, where do you want it to align? So there's left. Center is not quite centered in this because remember, it's centered along the line. And so where it is positioned there now is cent centered along the total length of the line that makes up the shape, which is not what we want to do. So we're going to left justify it and then we're going to move it inside the shape so the way we move it inside the shape is to use this little up arrow here and we make this negative and as we make it negative the text moves inside the shape now let's make it white again okay so we've moved it inside the shape now but how do we get it over to the center of the circle which is where we want it easy we go here and we just increase this value here, the one where the arrow is pointing to the right, until the text is centered in the circle. I guess that's more or less centered. And that's it. That's how you uh, create um, circular text inside a shape. Now, the other way to do it um, is to take a circle. So let's make a new page is to take a circle that you may want, or any shape, it doesn't have to be a circle, but we'll use a circle since that's what we're using. Let's make it an egg shape. Okay, so now we want the text to be aligned on this shape. So we type some text in here, and we do the font work thing, but nothing happens. Um, nothing happens to the text because, I'll show you. It's all grayed out. You can't do anything. Nothing works. Why? Because the circle is not a curve. It's actually a circle shape. So we need to convert that circle into a curve. Now, we need to take the text out of it because if there's text in it, the text is also going to be converted to curves, and that won't help us at all. So let's take this, go to Shape, or we can just simply right-click it. Um, Right-click it, convert to curve. Okay, so we convert it into a curve. Now you can see it's got these drag handles here, and we can drag them and, and change the shape of the of um, the oval into some other shape because it's it's a solid shape whose boundary is made up of curve of a curve. Okay, so now we can go here and we can type in uh, network. Network security, <coughs> and we can bring up the font work uh, toolbar. Let's just um, leave it uh, in its own little window here. And we select curve, and you can see where it's gone. Uh, we want it to be left aligned, and we want it to be inside, and then we want it to move around to where we want it to be, which is a bit tedious and slow. Uh, because of the nature of the shape. Um, sorry. Keep going. And as you can see, the curvature of the text changes as it moves around uh, the shape as well. So now we have our text inside. So our text inside the shape, but it's not actually the shape. It's a, it's the shape converted into a curve. So if you're gonna if you're gonna use um, uh, circles and not split them up and you want to make curve text and you must first convert them into a curve so and then the third way to do it which is uh, not my favorite way uh, so let me just delete this little egg here and let's just draw another circle um, this is not my favorite way at all uh, but sometimes when you have Circles that you can't convert to shapes because you still want to use the features of the circle. This is the way that will work for you. You take a curved line 
So you select the curved line here. Uh, let me just uh, make this a bit bigger so you can see. So uh, here you select the curved line and then you draw the curve to follow the curvature of the circle more or less. Um, yeah, you can see that I'm not following the, the uh, uh, curvature of the circle there very well, but we're going to use we're going to use the um, the handles to reshape this. So we're going to drag this one to the edge of the circle, this one to the edge of the circle on the other side, and then we're going to just use the spline. Oops. Um, Okay, let's just move it up out of the way of the circle because I keep selecting the circle. Okay, so we just grab this, select it, and when we when we go to this uh, big the biggest square, the handle turns into this uh, uh, spline um, manipulation, whatever you call this. I don't know. I'm not the I'm not a graphic designer, so let's just see and. And we can drag this a little closer and this a little closer. And that's probably good enough for illustrative purposes. So now we can move this into the, into the, um, inside the circle. And now we can type some text over the line. Okay, so now it's a bit weird looking, isn't it? So now let's get to the font work tool, font work, curve. Um, and we can move the text inside down below or up above it doesn't matter uh let's just uh, uh put it there and let's just give the line a little more curvature okay and uh once we're happy with the with that where the text is um then we need to select the line again and make it none and there we have our curved text. So that's another way to make curved text. So now we can go back to our shape and we can start adding the text that I want on this to make the simplified version of, um, of, of this diagram. Okay, so now let's uh, get the shape into our, the text into our shapes here. Um, so, I'm just going to quickly copy the uh, write the text in a text editor here so that I don't have to keep on looking back at this one. So it's perimeter security. It's networks. Uh, let's make it all caps like they've got there. That's perimeter security network security. It is endpoint security. It is application ah. security and data is security. Okay, so we're going to just use this to copy the the text. Um, don't worry about it. It's just to avoid for me to avoid having to type it. So now the thing is, is you can't really see what you're doing when you're starting from the back layer. Um, so I'm going to start with the back layer, and I'm just going to align. Sorry, I'm just going to arrange, uh, bring it to the front. Okay, so now I can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to type the text in here, which I will just copy from my file, perimeter security. Uh, no, I want it to be inside. Okay, doesn't want to do that, does it? Um, doesn't want to copy it into the file. I mean, doesn't want to copy it into the shape. Let's try that again. Okay, easier if I type it. Okay, so now I can open up font work. I can set the uh, set it to 
follow the curve. I can left align it. Um, I can move it inside the, uh, the circle shape. And I can move it up to uh, the middle or close to the middle. And just move it down a little bit more. And there I've got my text curved just like in the original diagram. Now I'm going to just select it. No, nope, not the dia. Uh, let's just close font work. Select the text. Make the font white. So it is actually just like in the original diagram. And now I can move this back to the back. So I go arrange then to the back. And there we have perimeter security um, written exactly um, um, how we how we want it. So we now select the blue one. I'm going to be naughty and just type. Okay, so now it says network security. Now you won't see it because that's inside the blue and it's behind all the other ones. But that's fine because we know what it's going to look like. So we just go put it there. Now you can see there it is over on the right hand side there. We're going to left align it. So you can see it just peeping out there. We're going to move it down inside the blue and then we're going to move it up to, to being centered. And there it is centered in, in the blue. Maybe we can just move it down a little tiny bit more. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's how it's done. Um, we can close the front work. We can select, close that, select the text. Control A to select it all and change it to white. And we just keep on doing that and keep on doing that. I don't think I need to, to do this over and over and over. You get the idea now. We will do the same thing in here. Now I'll go off and do all of that and I'll just come back and show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so there it is completed. This is actually what I wanted to show in my slide. <clears throat> which is going to be used in a lecture that I do on cybersecurity. Now, if, the, if you look at this diagram, it, it is way too complicated to put into a slide. Fine in a document. So maybe I'll go back and look at adding some elements of this um, to a document, but ones that are relevant to what I want to talk about. But for the time being, this has been converted into this for use in a slide. And normally this should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, obviously it's taken a bit longer so that I could show you how to do it. I just have one little caveat here. I haven't figured out how to put a line break into one of these curved terms. So what I did here for and response is, um, sorry, let me just get out of that again. Uh, you can see that I created a curved line there. So if I turn on continuous for the line, um, make it bright red for you. You can see there is the li curved line. So the and response is actually following uh, this curved line because I couldn't get a line break in there. Um, uh, there probably is a way. I just need to go and read up on it and figure out how to do it. But for now, putting the line in there was the quickest way to do it. And then just making it invisible by selecting none for the line. And so here's the completed slide with all the, the core uh, parts of this uh, particular, I'm pointing in the wrong direction here, uh, of this particular um, image, but greatly simplified so that I can put it in a presentation that I will be using as a lecture in a course. And it's simplified in a way that makes it feasible to use it in a course. Um, this diagram you would never be able to present. It just doesn't make any sense to put something up on the screen with so much information on it and the words and the text so tiny. So here is the slide completed and uh, pasted into a slide in my uh, cybersecurity course. And uh, this is what I'll be speaking to um, in the course instead of that complicated slide. 
and it is also perfectly legal and legitimate to make um, derivations of diagrams like this that you can uh, use. And so that's it. That's all you need to do to copy, not copy, to derive better diagrams out of existing ones. And it also shows you how you can make complicated shapes and, and, and formations in LibreOffice Draw and then make use of them somewhere like LibreOffice Impress or, heaven forbid, even PowerPoint. So that's it for now. I hope you uh, have enjoyed the um, presentation of how to create these complex shapes in uh, LibreOffice Draw. Um, let me know if you want more things on LibreOffice. I just randomly choose topics to um, pre present uh, videos on, mostly associated with things that I myself am learning about. And in the process of learning about them, I can teach as well. Um, but if you want to know more about some of the complex um, drawing techniques that you can use in LibreOffice Draw, let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, click somewhere down there, like and subscribe. Until next time, thank you very much.